Motherfucker! Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, guys. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, along with my man Brad Gilmore. And I thought we should, you know, get into a little something that I was listening to earlier this week. Um, we call it story time. Story time inside the Hall of Fame. Um, and it was a, a, a story that I was listening to actually on uh, uh, Keep It at One Hundred, now Disco Inferno and uh, Conan's podcast. Question came in uh, as far as you know, um, did they know anything about? Booker T being the cancer in the locker room at TNA. So just something I thought I had to clear up, you know what I mean? Uh, because TNA is a, a company that I worked at um, back in uh, early 2000s. And um, I worked there for two years uh, in TNA. And, and I've told a, a few stories about TNA. And, and, and the one story I always say uh, about TNA, they say, man, how'd you like TNA? I always say, man, it was like a vacation. You know, I would go there, you know, um, you know, once every two weeks, you know, um, for a couple of days and do a show. Is that Disney um, Studios? Um, you know, we could actually go, you know, get on get on the rides and hang out and have fun. Um, it was so laid back and, and kicked back to the point to where, man, um, it was it was chill. So I always tried to give you know, TNA, a uh, good rub. Cornette, I think, was working there um, back then. I think he was a part of, you know, saying, you know, how, I don't know. I don't know if he was saying how miserable I was. And so I, I hope this this gets back. I just want to talk about my time in, in TNA for a second. And people saying, you know, how bad of an attitude I had. Man, I, I swear, man, I had such an awesome uh, attitude going into working with that company because I was so high on working with guys like Samoa Joe and Bobby Roode and, you know, AJ Styles, I was like, man, uh, you know, Jay Lethal. Um, and those guys, I was like, man, this is going to be great. I'm uh, working with a, a whole a different generation of wrestlers as well as trying to give back. I remember having a meeting with those guys at TNA when I first got there. I said, man, uh, I know you guys are probably, uh, you know, wondering about me. Some may be a little skeptical. I say, but I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to help each and every one of you guys. And if any, if it's anything that I could do, um, just let me know, man. I'm, I, I know you guys are seeing guys come here from the big company and, um, you know, get their paycheck. And, and, and you guys, you know, still in the same place. I say, but he, I'm here to help you. and But more importantly, I'm going to prove it. Um, I remember one time we went overseas. I um, mean, this is where I think I got a really bad rap um, as far as me being in TNA. We went overseas. And um, all of the boys, you know, we, we were working so hard. And um, we, we got to the building, and and, and we had no catering um, at the building, zero, zero catering for the boys. And a lot of guys in TNA, those guys weren't making a whole lot of money or anything like that. Me, personally, I had a credit card, so I could, I could, I could get some food um, if I wanted it. But I felt really, really bad uh, for, for those young guys. Remember, after the show, they wanted to stop at a food truck. And, and get some food um, for, 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 for the guys. And the guys would have had to buy their own food. And I pitched a, a, a fit. I went off. I went crazy. I lost my mind. Okay. The Continental champion. Um, he is Rolling Stones. Oh, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but maybe that's where I got uh, the bad rap at, uh, for a second because I was speaking up for the boys. I made sure um, I spoke up for those guys because those guys were like, you know, dropped off on a, a, a island and said, you know, find some water and food um, on your own. You ain't get no credit goes like one of these uh, survivor missions or something like that. That's the way it felt for me. And I, and I was really ticked off um, um, that those guys um, were, were treated that way. I remember coming out of my pocket and, and buying um, some guys food because they didn't even have a credit card of their own. So I was, I was pretty ticked off about it. Yeah. I remember um, um, being in TNA and, and, having to catch a, a bus ride like eight hours to, to catch a one hour flight. And did I get hot about it? Yeah, I got hot about it. Did I get hot about when they asked me to do a, a media day um, and they asked me to, you know, do it in my own car instead of sending me a car to take me around. Did I get upset about it? Yeah, I got upset about it. Um, and maybe that's where people think, you know, what Booker T is, a, you know, maybe not a, not a team player, but I think everything that I did, and, and you could talk to the guys like AJ. You could talk to the guys like Jay Lethal, um, Awesome Kong. Talk to them. You, you ask them, um, did Booker T make TNA a better place for them? And I think all of them in unison would say, hell yeah. Well, I'd, I've, I've never heard about you being any sort of 
cancer in the locker room. I've never heard that before. I don't know where the fan got the question from or why that was brought up. Um, I I just remember, and I've told this, I think, before on the, on the show. I remember one time we were backstage at a SmackDown a couple years back. We were doing the old show, um, and you went off to go do something, and, and we were about to interview AJ Styles. And then you left and did something, and I was sitting there with AJ, and we were just talking, and he was like, oh, man. Book when we were in TNA, he was so great, and he and he started telling me stories about things that you taught him that he still does today, right? And he's like, man, I'm so glad that I had that opportunity. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. So, and that was coming from the biggest organic star that TNA created, who wasn't at that level yet when you were there. So, uh, you at the beginning, right? Because when you came in in 08 or whatever it was, AJ wasn't. He was no, he was known. He was up on the car, but he wasn't top he was, tier. No, he was their guy. He was their he was their franchise guy. Let's just say he was that their franchise guy for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I'm saying he wasn't the AJ that we know now. No, of no, this well polished number one guy anywhere in the world. Give him give him seven figures, right? Um, so I think that if anybody could have said, yeah, Booker held me down, Booker held me back, Booker didn't help me at all, AJ would have said it, or he wouldn't have said anything to me. If I said, how was it working with Booker and TNA? He would have been like, oh, you know, Book was uh, Book was there. Yeah, right? yeah. Are, are any of those guys? You, I, like I say, I don't know where this this rumor got started or anything like that. But but I but I can I can tell you this: you talk to any of those young guys, you know, and, and you ask them, you know, was Booker T good for their careers? Um, did Booker T do you know everything that he possibly could to help them? Um, did Booker T ever? Um, was Booker T ever in a position to, to hold one of these guys down, and he did it? Uh, none of that is going to happen. So when I hear stories like that, Booker T was the cancer. You know, Booker T was hated um, in TNA. Well, well, damn it, they they might have hated me, some of them. You know, uh, because I told them, that, you know, you don't send me a stretch limo, I'm not leaving my house. You know what I mean? Look, I'm not doing. I, I remember being overseas, and I and I remember saying. If we don't get food, don't ask me to do anything outside of wrestling on this tour, okay? Because that's the only job requirement I think I really have that, you know, that I should hold up, and that's going out there and wrestling. And the only reason I was willing to do that was because of the fans. But I say autographs, signings, anything outside of that, don't ask me to do nothing. And I was pretty hard about it, and I was pretty adamant about it. I did call it the Rumpa Room Tour um, um, because I felt like this was a major company. I felt like those guys that put in so much work, uh, those soldiers, uh, they should have got a, a whole lot better treatment than they got. And, and if that's why I was, if, if that's what made me the cancer of the locker room, so be it. Um, I, I'll be that. But um, at the end of the day, I think, um, uh, I think the guys at that company benefited more than uh, for that two years did anybody that had ever come in from outside of TNA. Now I'm going to leave it at that. I know it's going to be another Booker T hot take. And, uh, and that's why I would love to get, you know, um, you know, certain people that was there who saw it up close and personal to talk about it. Did, did you, and, and set the record straight. More than did you say, did you say Cornette started this? Well, I think he had something to do with it. I think he was, you know, they they mentioned his name when they when they was talking about it, okay. you know. Um, and, Cornette, and, come on the show. And you the thing is, the thing is that smoke, Cornette. No, and the thing is, I don't even remember uh, Cornette being in, in TNA when I was there because we really never had any. Uh, uh, the person I dealt with more than anything was uh, Dutch Mantel. Uh, and Dutch Mantel, we got along in Dutch. We got along real good. Um, Dutch was a a, a, a professional. Um, as far as um, knowing this business, uh, and if you can, you know, want to be around anyone and learn uh, from uh, Dutch Mantel, uh, was the guy. So I, I was around Dutch a whole lot. Uh, I think I think uh, Vince Russo uh, was there when when I was there because I remember Vince Russo said he didn't want to talk to anybody, uh, any of the wrestlers about booking the show. You know, I mean, just stay away from me. I got this. So I mean, I wasn't one of the guys who wanted to, but it was certain guys who wanted to have a little input. And he was not having it, so <laughs> he wasn't there for it. But 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 but, but my thing is this: uh, if you ask me, um, what was my time like in TNA for those two years? Man, it was like a vacation. I made it fun for myself. Uh, and then at the end of my 
two-year contract, I left, but I fulfilled every day of my contract. Not one day did I say, no, I'm not coming in or anything like that. I feel fulfilled every obligation on my contract. And for people to say um, anything negative about me, um, as far as that company go, um, I, I, you know, I wish they said to my face, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I wish I knew who the sources were. Opposed, I wish I, I, wish I knew opposed to people just saying, um, Booker T, you know, we've heard uh, sources say, um, let me know who the sources are so we can talk. I ain't, I ain't trying to put no hands on anybody or anything like that. I just want to know who would say something like that, knowing what kind of person I was in total nonstop action wrestling. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, man, we got we got to take a break. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Talk about it a little bit more. Can you dig it, dig it, sucker? What's up? This Booker T, two-time Hall of Famer. I know you're checking out the shine, checking out the gloss. I want to thank you guys for checking out Row on YouTube. Hey, don't forget to click and subscribe to check out all the latest content right here each and every week. Now, can you dig that, sucker? <laughs> 